vibrant emerald herb oils give you a great way to add colour and flavour to a dish, as well as a way to preserve flavours when you have an abundance of an ingredient. Today I'll show you how I make these and how you can do it without any fancy equipment, but also a little optional extra step that you could take in the middle if you want to be a real perfectionist about it. These herb oils are great to have on hand and to add a little extra dimension to a dish and they store really well either in the fridge or even in the freezer if you're making larger batches of them. And then you've got this little pantry of herb oils that are there ready to use whenever you want them. They've got a softer, more muted flavour than fresh herbs, so I wouldn't use these instead of a fresh herb, particularly if I want that vibrant, punchy flavour of the fresh herb. But for a softer, more lingering flavour and to add a little bit of richness to a dish, these are great. So our starting point is to choose a fresh herb and that might be a particular flavour that you want to work with or it might be that you've got a glut of something that you want to preserve. This method works great for loads of different herbs, so dill, parsley, mint, lovage, lemon verbena, pine, rosemary, thyme, nettles, they all work fantastically. With an ingredient with smaller leaves like thyme or pine, I'd also combine this with a base herb like parsley, just so that you can make a large enough yield of the oil. So to prepare our herbs, we bring a large pot of water to the boil. It wants to be a really large pot so that when we drop our herbs into this, it doesn't drop that temperature too much. We're gonna blanch our herbs in the boiling water for one minute and then immediately refresh them in ice water. This quick blanching step destroys the enzyme that causes herbs to oxidize and brown. So it's gonna help us to get a really bright color and clear flavor. Then we're going to pat our herbs dry and just squeeze off any excess moisture and then let them sit at room temperature just until they're no longer damp to the touch. We want to make sure that we're not getting any excess moisture into our oil. Now I'm going to weigh my herbs and then decide on the ratio of oil that I want to use. For the strongest flavour and deepest colour, I would do equal parts of my blanched herbs and oil, but that does give you a lower yield for your ingredients and labour. If a slightly lighter flavour and colour is okay, then I might use two parts oil to one part of my blanched herbs. For the one I'm going to make today, I'll go right in the middle and use one part of my blanched herbs to one and a half times their weight of oil. That's a nice happy medium. So I'll take 200 grams of my blanched herbs and add 300 grams of grapeseed oil. I'm going to blend them on high for 10 minutes or until the oil reaches 60 degrees Celsius, just from the heat generated by the friction of blending. And then the next step is where we can add a little extra perfectionist step if we want to. We're going to filter our herb oil, so you can simply pour this into a coffee filter and let it sit and strain overnight and this will give you a fantastic, beautiful, vibrant herb oil. Now, you absolutely don't have to do this, but just to get my herb oils that last 10% clearer and brighter, I will spin my oil in a centrifuge. The centrifuge separates out particles by weight, removing any last little micro pieces of herbs or any tiny amounts of water that could just make the herb oil any less than 100% clear. It's really not necessary for most people or restaurants and you'll get great results without this, but if you've got a centrifuge that you could use, then it's hard not to want to do this. I use the little Spinzol centrifuge from Booker and Dax, which I love and I've had loads of use out of over the years. So once you've got your finished strained herb oil, you can store it in the fridge short term or in the freezer for longer term storage. I hope you found this interesting and useful and let me know in the comments if there's other particular techniques you'd like me to cover or if you'd like to see more about how I use things like the centrifuge. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.